Welcome to Impact Wrestling. What a mess. That's the title of this. Some of it is a good mess. Some of it is a bad mess. Some we're in between mess, but we got a mess on our hands. Going into Slammiversary. That is how the MO of Impact Wrestling is, guys. If you don't know, if this is the first time you're looking, how you doing? But if you don't know Impact, before their, their great pay-per-views, they have a lackluster build every single time. And when they do give us a pay-per-view, they're surprisingly good or at least adequate. This is no different. They had a mess on their hands. Now, I don't say this often, but I got to say it. Because of production, I stopped doing it for a while due to the fact that it was so bad. And I was getting so annoyed, I didn't want to talk about it much anymore. But periodically, I am going to tell you the state of it. Has it improved or not? Because you deserve to know. If anyone has not seen the show and you only hear reviews of it, this is your way of knowing if the show has improved or not. Or if you haven't seen it yet and you're going to see it, you deserve to know when you watch the show tomorrow, you'll know. Or if on Saturday, counting if you're not working, you should deserve to know what the quality of the show is going to be. Was the audio good? It was fine. It's what we always get. Were the backstage segments filmed pretty well? To a point, yeah. Lighting was all right. Audio was all right. Camera work is still the main issue. If you don't know, now you know. That's what you get with Impact Wrestling, an exact copy of WWE, who's worse, who's like this. They're copying WWE. I'm not saying it. Watch WWE and how bad their camera work is now that they zoom in so heavily and then watch Impact Wrestling where they zoom heavily but not as heavily as WWE. I wish they wouldn't do it. I wish they would do this. Leave an open field so everyone could see what's going on. But they don't listen to a little YouTuber like me who has said this for years why don't you use a wide angle lens just in case someone says, oh, you complain about impact so much about the damn camera work. Why don't you say what they could do better? I have for years. Do it like this. A wide angle lens is not that hard to get for a damn camera. $600 to $1,200 for their cameras. They could get it. They just don't want to use it. Now, let's get into the show, shall we? First match, Tennille Dashwood versus Rosemary. Now, we don't see Havoc. And here's the thing for me. Due to the fact there is no real interest in the tag team champions right now, the influence, the only thing left they have right now is Rosemary teaming up with somebody because Havoc is not there. Either she might be injured or her contract is up or maybe she was not under contract and she was just still doing recordings. I know she was under contract at one point. But it's a good possibility her contract expired, but she might have still been coming in for tapings because they still get paid to come in to do tapings. Or she just couldn't arrive there. Maybe she had something to do. I don't know what it is. But she was not there, and we had to be a match between her and Rosemary. Tennille. This was not about Tennille. This was about Rosemary winning and Rosemary getting a new new partner to go up against the influence and that is and I knew was coming Tyle Valkyrie it's the only person they would put Rosemary with because they have such a great history together now we know that Taya had problems with Rosemary before she left she was arrested before she headed off to WWE now here's the thing do I want to see Taya Valkyrie with Rosemary no not because I hate seeing Tyra with Rosemary, but I want to see Tyra by herself. Look, guys, we just got Tyra Valkyrie back. And I want to see her be in a feud. I want to see her do her work on her own. I do not want to see a team up with Rosemary. I don't. I am not interested in seeing her with Rosemary right now. Later, yes, because I know her and Rosemary got great chemistry working together or working against one another. They do. And I'm sure many people would agree with me. But do you honestly want to see Rosemary working with Taya now? Before Slammiversary. And for what? 
because they literally have no tag teams and they have not done what I suggested, which was to bring in indie women to pose or actually be tag teams, pay them a little bit of scratch to come in and do maybe two or three tapings to go up against the influence and whatever tag team you want, like it was Rosemary and Havoc, or you could have um, Shaw and Lady Frost, who hasn't come back yet, unless she is back and she's on BTI, which I don't watch. Or Shaw with um, Alicia Edwards. There's nothing wrong with it having someone come in and do the work to make it feel like they got a full roster of tag teams for the women, the, the knockouts, but they don't do it. So the knockouts division for the tag teams feel completely irrelevant. And I hate that. What was the point of bringing in? Oh yeah, I remember why. Because they copied the WWE and reinvigorated titles they had for years where the knockouts in TNA were 10 times bigger than the women in WWE. The TNA roster, no matter if you liked the beautiful people or not, you liked a Madison Rain or not, was more entertaining then WWE had, and I'm saying that as a guy who loved Naomi Knight, and when she was in the Funkadactyls, and they had no titles, but I knew Naomi was untapped talent. There you go. Now, PCO versus A. Macklin. Now, I know I'm going to get something from some of my subscribers saying, oh, you're going to be fond of this match, and you're not going to say it should be, they, they should have stopped it. Motherfucker, don't you even listen to what I say and understand I'm saying motherfucking with respect. The people that I spoke to in my comments, you guys know who you are. I literally respect you. I didn't say anything disrespectful to you, but I did give you a reason why. I gave you multiple reasons why and they were valid reasons. They were not apples and oranges like one of my subscribers said, which I understand his point of view as far as he was concerned. Cody's a grown-ass man. He went out there. Let him take his lumps. No. As the Sleg Daddy who actually produced a video and uploaded it, he saw Hell in a Cell and he reviewed Hell in a Cell. He understands that that match had to happen, but honestly, he agreed with me and said, this is a sorry sight that the WWE let him go out there looking like that. It was not the point, as I said in my comments multiple times to this subscriber and to others who I do respect. There's a lot of people I respect in my comments. I honestly do. But as I said to them, this is about perception. And the Sleg Daddy agreed with me that perception is reality. It makes you think, and that's a casual wrestling fan, not like you or like me, that if you see a guy who is hurt before he even gets in the damn match. Like PCO, I will explain in a minute what happened with him busting his mouth open and possibly breaking his clavicle, which I don't know because I didn't see any reports of him being injured yet. But when it came to Cody, him going out there injured like that made a bad impression for the company. Now, does it matter that Vince doesn't give a fuck? No, it doesn't. We... As wrestling fans care. And if it's not a loud minority, because many wrestling fans, like the ones who spoke, simply said, who gives a fuck? Cody wanted to go out there, let him hurt himself. Or work or other. Cody wasn't badly hurt. He'll be fine. He's a grown ass man. It's not the point. You got wrestling fans who will perceive this and see this as how Vincent Kenny McMahon does not care about his damn wrestlers. It's not the point, as I said in my video and comments, that he was badly injured or not. It was the point that perception, seen with your own eyes, will make you think that this damn company is a piece of shit. And it deserves to go fucking under because the president or CEO, Vincent Kenny McMahon, was willing to send someone out there looking like that, whether he wanted it or not. 
Vince makes the final fucking decisions if he's going to let you go out there or not. Vince decides, not Cody. It makes no difference Cody wanted to do it to show that he was a grown-ass man and a tough-ass motherfucker like I said. It is the point that Vince chose to let him go out there or convince him to go out there. It makes no difference if Cody was tricked into it or was more than willing to go in there for either extra money or to prove it to the fans that he is worth their time. It don't matter. He made that choice and it was the wrong one and the slag daddy agreed with me. And he has way more subscribers and knows more than I do in many ways. I respect the guy. He's one of the people that encouraged me to do this for the last 10 years. So if you're telling me I still don't understand, go watch his Hell in a Cell review. And go tell him, you're stupid, I don't agree, and he'll laugh his fucking ass at you. Because he'll think you're a stupid motherfucker. With respect, of course. He, he's respectful to his commenters and the people who pay for him. He does. But still. Now, PCO with Macklin. That was a rough match. I do not have the shot. And I'm not showing any shots in here because the camera work is still not good in, the, in Impact Wrestling. But he decided he wanted to, I think he wanted to do a, um, what was it? A suicide dive or at least a spear at Macklin. He speared a suicide, dived him. And he got caught up in the ropes. And PCO is nearly three, two something near 300. And he smashes his face straight into the mat very hard. And when he turned around and got up, his mouth was bleeding. You know, actually, I think I might actually at least, at, at least this one image of him getting up with a bloody mouth. I think he bit his tongue. He had to. There's no way he could have that much tongue, blood in his mouth unless his tongue might have been bit open. And I think it was. No, actually, no, I'm not going to put any images. No images. None. I have, I believe I have the image, but the camera work really pisses me off, so I'm not going to do it. But the point is, he kept wrestling until when Macklin was put his arm in the steel steps and kicked it. And then we saw, I got to put images in there. Honestly, I'm sure I'm going to put, I put, all right, here's the PCO bleeding from the mouth. And here's the PCO where he looks like he might have his clavicle broken off from his shoulder or his 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 neck. I don't know which one it is, but there you go. There goes both of them, they're in my face. What the fuck? You wonder if it's real or not because there are certain people when they get hurt, it could be a permanent damage or maybe that they never got it fixed and they just kept wrestling as it was. I don't know if this is an actual injury or not because if it is an actual injury, PCO is out, flat out out. But I don't know if it is because they finished the match. It was very brief after this happened and Macklin flew him back into the ring. He finished the match and PCO did not want to stop. And even when the docs came in, he started fighting people and he grabbed himself and turned into the camera and showed it. So it could be one of two things. PCO wanted to continue showing his character that he was a tough bastard that cannot be stopped as the perfect, what is it? Um, experiment perfect one, I can't remember. Perfect, um, perfect creation one. There you go. As the perfect creation one, that is what he did. Now, I can't say that it's real or not. I still have to check. I tried to see right before here if there was any reports. I went over to nodq.com, but I just briefly looked. I didn't see anything. I'll have to check the other websites to see if there's actually an injury to him. I probably think there isn't. Because I think this might be an actual condition that he has. So he'll probably be able to make some anniversary. And then wrestle again against Macklin. Because that is a feud right there. Now. Next. We got Joe Dorling versus a Josh Alexander. No obligatory picture of Josh. Because I'm not interested in doing it. But. He was being cheered. No matter what anybody says. Whether you feel he's boring, ugly, I don't give a damn and neither do the other fans because they cheered him. Was this a great match? It was average. Like most matches that are for Josh or for Joe Dorling for that matter, if you think that Josh is boring, guess what? Joe Dorling is boring too. 
They're both boring. They're, one is a big guy, one is a mat wrestler who many people believe doesn't have character or does have character in his wrestling, but he hasn't gone up against anybody that generally will push him very hard. Joe Dorling is not going to push him hard. He's a power wrestler. There is no way Joe's going to push him. He just isn't. And he didn't. So Joe is a towering man who can squish the living life out of me, but he's not a great power wrestler. He's a power wrestler, yes. He looks menacing, but he's not going to get the best out of somebody because he's not built for that. So this was an average match. And in the end, Josh won. I wasn't... No, Joe won. I'm sorry. Josh lost due to the fact he took the... Well, how can I say this? Deciding to take the flag from Joe and then crack it on him to make him just get hurt didn't really hurt him much. I kind of wish that he just hit him in the head with a steel chair, then actually hit him in the head, hit him in the chest with the, the flag. That would have been more effective because if he really wants to get rid of him, he didn't do it. This isn't Josh's fault. And I know people can say, you see, Josh is boring. This doesn't work. Stupid. Josh is the one who wrote the storyline. Shut up. Look, Josh is only going by the storyline he's given. He was told to break the flags, the stick with the flag against Joe Dolan's chest. If it was a smart booking like Impact Wrestling should be, he should have, and this is Joe, get a steel chair, bring it in, then he couldn't get it, and then Josh hits him with it, gets disqualified, but just to make it really that Joe is out because Joe's not going to stop going unless there's a stipulation that he's out along with Diener, he should have wailed on him with the steel chair until Joe couldn't move no more and that would have been the end of it. Then Joe would have been out and then the only person left that could have been eliminated next week would be Diener. So then you would only have Eric Young and Josh Alexander. That should have been better booking, but guess what? Creative didn't come up with that. How come someone like me, a lowly YouTuber who luckily may get 50 subscribers, if I'm lucky, could come up with a better understanding of how to make a storytelling work for a smaller wrestler versus a bigger one who's in a faction that you're going to face sound better. There you go. Now, we got, um, hmm, let me give you like what, am I interested in the moose and the, the, the Sammy Callahan feud? Mm, yes and no. How can I explain this? It's good to see Sammy's given a prominent moment. That he's working with the guy who's been at the top of Impact Wrestling. That's Moose. Whether he was still there before he broke his ankle or afterward, Moose has been at the top. But lately, Moose has gone from here to here due to the fact they went to Josh. And I want to make this clear. I want to say this because I know there's going to be people going to say this. And it's going to be unrecorded. It's going to be recorded right now. As I said before, you guys who hate Josh Alexander, know this. Moose was in the same position as Josh. Because this isn't about Josh being thrown into the main event. You think that he's not worth it as a mid-carder or undercarder. Moose was in that position. Eddie Edwards was in that position. Guess what? Morrissey has been pushed up to the top and brought back down again. The people they got left is all they're pushing. Those are the ones that are pushing the most. And I've heard so many people say they can't stand Josh or can't stand Eddie there because Eddie isn't that great. It's not the point if Eddie's good or not. The only ones they got left are mid-carters or people that's never been given the option to try. Flat out. So, like with Sammy, they pushed him to the top. Like Rich Swan, they pushed him to the top. Like Eddie Edwards, they pushed him to the top. Josh Alexander and Moose, they pushed him to the top to see if they sink or swim. And Moose has been the one that was the most successful, even more than Rick Swan. And I like Rick. I do Rich. I like Rich. I wanted a real story. Guys, I wanted a story that would have made it full circle for Rich Swan. And Sammy Callahan, that Sammy wins the title or Rich wins the title, and each of them finally had to face one another and they flipped the script. And Rich Swan became the evil guy. That's what I wanted. And Sammy became the good guy. 
and they had to face one another. And Sammy, who legitimately considers Rich Swan like family, because they've been with each other for so long as friends. They legitimately love each other as family. They were there for each other when both sets of their family died. They could have actually written a story that would have been beautiful for both these guys who legitimately known each other for decades as friends who love each other as family. They probably know each other's kids. They probably considered them their god kids. They loved them so much. And they couldn't even come up with a real story where Rick Swan could have turned heel and Sammy could have been faced and they could have been facing one another where Rick Swan, well, Rick Swan is evil and Sammy's telling him, you got to stop it, little brother. You know I love you. I've been there when your parents were dead. You've been there for me when my parents were dead. We've been family. You need to stop. And he says, I'm not going to stop. I'm, this is rich. I'm not going to stop because I'm the damn champ. Shut the hell up. Get on my face. And he has to straighten out Rich Swan by winning the damn title. How can you mess this up? Impact freaking wrestling. That you had a story with two legitimate wrestlers who known each other for so long. Who consider each other like family. Family. And you blew it. Do I like the story with Moose and Sammy Callahan? I don't want to see Moose dealing with Sammy Callahan, but it is understandable that Sammy got his ankle broken by Moose. So they have to go there. Now, do I believe it's going to be a good storyline? It's not bad. Just like what's going on when it comes to Tyle Valkyrie working with Rosemary. It's not that I wouldn't want to see it now. I mean, see it eventually, just not now. Sammy just came back. I understand he has to go after Moose. This has to happen. But honestly, I don't want to see Moose there. Because I want to see Moose do something else. But that's what we got. Okay. Um, it was good to see Matt Morgan. Seeing Matt Morgan in the back. And he's currently working on the Wrestling Inc. podcast. Next to being a mayor. Uh, a mayor in one of the counties of Florida. I believe it's Florida. It's, it's good to see Matt still interested in the wrestling business, that he was willing to come back to Impact Wrestling and say something. Now, do I believe he's going to be one of those Impact Wrestling originals, well, TNA originals, that's going to help out at Slammiversary? I don't know. I don't think so. They did make it very clear that Matt is no longer an active wrestler. Now, I do remember an interview that he had at one point with Chris Van Bleen that he was still working at least a little bit until he wanted to make sure his son was taken care of and he became a mayor. Now, I can't say that he wouldn't wrestle because guess what? In Knoxville, Tennessee, you got, you, 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 you got Kane still wrestling even though he's a representative of the government. So there's no way you can't say that Matt Morgan wouldn't go back in. I just don't know if he will go back in. So I don't know. Now, um, what else do we have here? Mm, I know I can talk about what's going to happen with Deanna Perrazzo dealing with, um, dealing with Tasha Seals, but I don't really want to do that because honestly, unless Gail Kim becomes the Jeff Jarrett of that match, I'm not seeing that match going to be really good because let's be honest, the reason the, the King of the Mountain match worked so well was because Jeff Jarrett was always involved in some form or fashion in that damn match. Even when it wasn't there all the time, there was some type of implication that helped because it was about Jeff Jarrett. It doesn't mean it was great. It's just that it, it was about him. So if, J if Gail Kim isn't involved in some way of that match, I don't know if it's going to be great. There's going to be an issue with it. Now, I don't think it'll be bad, but I'm going to leave it because I don't want to have a skewed opinion of the match. Even though I don't believe it's going to be great without Gail Kim involving herself. But it doesn't mean I think the match is going to be total trash. So I'm not going to involve that. The final thing I'm going to talk about, if I'm forgetting anything. Um, let me see if I'm forgetting anything. I don't think so. The final match was Honor No More versus Kaz and the Motor City Machine Guns. Now, earlier that night, we did get Heath saying he wants revenge on Honor No More. Because of what they did to Rhino. Now it's Rhino supposed to get knee surgery. He's out. Or ankle surgery. Ankle or knee surgery. I can't remember which one. And he's out. And he's angry. So we had the match. Which wasn't bad. Kaz still looks 
10 years young, 20 years younger. He is that good of a wrestler. I'm going to see Machine Guns was fine. I still believe Chris Saban should have been the person that Eddie Edwards to turn on to go to Honor No More. That's the person I really think Honor No More should have had. Chris. Not Eddie. But the match wasn't bad. In the end, I didn't expect Honor No More to lose. I knew they were going to win. I knew it. There's just no way they were going to lose one week before Slammiversary. A week, uh, no, two weeks before Slammiversary, not one, two. Then you got Heath coming out trying to whoop ass, but he couldn't do it. And then he gets his, na- his knee, yeah, it was a knee, gets his knee nailed by Honor No More, and he's screwed up. Don't know if he's out in story, but he gets nailed, and they just show him laid out. What a mess. Now, what do we got here? We got two weeks before Slammiversary. The only few matches we got, or stories we got, is Honor No More dealing with the um, Motor City Machine Guns, Kaz, and whoever they're going to pick. I know that Ace Austin has now become a part of Bullet Club, but until he comes back possibly this Thursday, we really don't know how far they're going to go with this when it comes to Ace Austin being part of Bullet Club with Jay White because right now we still got Chris Bay working with Jay White and how are you going to have Jay White, Chris Bay, and, and Ace Austin work together? How are they going to book it? I'm curious to see. Until then, I'm not going to see or speak much about it. But I will say Alex Zane is now part of the Ultimate X match going into Slammiversary. He's a part of it. Now, I don't know Alex Zane. I haven't watched any of his work. And I know people want to say he's really good. I don't know nothing until they see if he can hold a character, if he can work in a ring, if he got charisma. means nothing. I'm not going to watch any of his stuff because any of his stuff that you show in another promotion does not mean he's going to do the same thing in the promotion you're watching. Because if that was true, the majority of people who went to WWE would show exactly the same thing and they didn't. So, this is what you get. And I hope you enjoyed the Zane view. Please give me a comment below and maybe a like or two. And I will see if this weekend I can see Always Ready. And I don't know if I'm going to be able to see the New Japan Pro Wrestling pay-per-view or whatever show they're going to have. But I'm going to see if I can at least try to watch it or at least consider watching it. Peace.